G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Thursday morning here in Australia, markets are up a little bit. We're still under that $2 trillion mark. I've got a lot of new stories that I need to get through and some very interesting uh, things showing up on charts and sort of TA, uh, not, yeah, a little bit TA I suppose, but showing up on charts that have people quite bullish, even though we've seen a bit of a retracement and it has been, at least for me, I would say it was a little bit scary. I, I wasn't quite really fully expecting it, but I did. I was somewhat suspicious that it would come. So yeah, it wasn't completely unexpected, but I, I just, yeah, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And, you know, we'll have to wait and see if we are really about to push our way out of it and continue to be more bullish or... Unfortunately, do we have to be a little bit more bearish before we can be more bullish? Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, I know, but it can't be all the way up. As I showed on the charts before, we really have moved a lot over the last month or so. There has to be at least somewhat small corrections within that to keep it running. Because the longer and harder we pump without any retracement, the harder we're going to dump. That's just the way it works. That's the way it works in all markets. It's just even more brutal when it happens in the crypto markets but let's have a look so 1.96 trillion up 1.3 percent just under that two trillion dollar mark btc dominance continues to fall volume down a little bit that's to be expected and gas prices still sitting around two dollars for a very basic trade all right bit of a sea of green though and so you know people have quickly turned around that kind of bearish sentiment you know one day green one day red one day green one day red it's almost what it feels like and I mean you can have a look here it's very kind of chop saw reaction over the last 24 hours and then you start to look over the last kind of few days generally still trending up but we have those pullbacks as well all right what's done the best in the last 24 hours though what's you know well, I don't want to say the outliers because it's not like there's a downtrending market. Most things are up at the moment. But what has performed the best in the top 100? Who are we? There we go, 58%. Uh, content value network up nearly 40%. Avalanche, we're going to have a look at that. We've got a story uh, up also. And Luna just continues to do well. Of, I wanted to buy in, but it's just pumping too hard. I don't want to chase it. I really am going to wait for a correction to buy some more Luna. Uh, this has done unbelievably well and as always I'm kicking myself I didn't buy more but it is what it is you can't buy everything I have a very small bag of lunar and now I'll just let it ride All right near protocol 16% you know 14 nearly 15% soul continues to do well Adam finally making a move Cardano's up Audius back up uh, eGold so lots of nice moves and you know double digit pluses we got a number of them and plenty of high single digit ones as well all right what about the flip side of the coin then what hasn't done well in the last 24 hours because there's always coins that uh, at least one or two that aren't doing as well all right uh Ravain, again they pumped really hard not too long ago so that's to be expected same with voyager i mean poof they're just kind of falling off uh, a cliff right there but it's only 12 percent, and this is the 24-hour chart they really did pump up a lot and again a lot of these coins that you see coming down now they did pretty well in the last kind of seven days and things like that so that's what we need to remember i mean Axie infinity has been on an absolute tear but look at that for chop soaring kind of action in the last 24 hours at least so a bit of a mixed bag but look the gains were quite good and the losses really aren't too bad i mean not even any double digit losses oh there we go one voyager double digit loss in the last 24 hours other than that we're in low single digits so things are looking pretty good now let's have a look at the bitcoin chart so here we can see we have come down and hopefully this is, you know, again, we're going to roll down and sort of test this level. And I did say that the other day when it was up here. I said it wouldn't surprise me if we came down uh, and bounced off this a few times. And look, we might bounce off it and then roll over and have one more sort of uh, low. Again, getting down to that kind of $43,000 level, maybe over the weekend. Now, never financial advice. And I'm not saying that is what's going to happen. It just wouldn't surprise me. 
there are some indicators that we're going to look at that make me think, all right, well, maybe we are ready to, you know, push up a lot higher. But I just get the feeling like we're going to sort of see a bit more kind of chop sorry rolling roll over action and that it might not be for another couple of days until we kind of see the low and again it might be sort of next week you know monday possibly where we finally get to the low and it gets to around that kind of 43 44 thousand dollar level again i don't offer financial advice i don't know that that's what's going to happen it just wouldn't surprise me with the way things are going we have had such a big move i mean you know what is this good lord We had 61% over the last 24 days. That's a pretty big move upwards. Now we have had some downwards movement, which you can see in there, one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three. Now we've already had four, we'll have to wait and see. But again, we got this line at 42,000 here. I'm not sure we're gonna come back down and retest 42,000, but I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if we get to sort of next Monday, where we get back down to about 43,000. Again, maybe even lower. Maybe it has to come to 42,000. I don't know before we pump back up higher. But that's one hell of a move without sort of too much of a retracement. I mean, this one was pretty good. These two little ones here haven't been too much and this one hasn't been too much. So we'll wait and see. Again, I always have what I think is going to happen. I think we're still in a bull run. I think we go higher. But at the moment, this could be nothing but a fake out. That's unfortunately the truth. Again, as I've said, we really need to break that kind of 52,000-ish dollar level. Around about sort of here. We break above that, and it's got to be a clean break, not just, you know, a little kind of wick or the top of a candle, because we still could, again, fake out, roll over, and then end up going much lower. Not trying to spread FUD. It's just things that I'm seeing on the charts that I'm keeping an eye out for. But I still remain bullish. I still think we are yet to see the, the peak of this bull cycle. All right, moving on. Now, let's go... Yeah, we'll get to the Bitcoin stuff last. That makes me think, you know, we can still go a lot higher. All right, Facebook's DM has secured licenses in nearly all states, says their board member. So the Facebook stablecoin payment system is quickly seeking and gaining regulatory, regulatory approval across America, according to board member David Marcus. So is Facebook getting ready to, you know, finally release DM and get over all the hurdles? It will be interesting to see how DM does, considering how bug, how bug, <laughs> how big Facebook is. I mean, it really could be an absolute behemoth. Or maybe people are just like, no, nah, we don't like Facebook all that much. Uh, and it doesn't be as big as what a lot of people are thinking it will be. Now, DM, they're stable coins. So don't expect to make millions of dollars off buying stable coins unless you've got millions of dollars of stable coins staked. Then, yes, you can make millions of dollars. But it could really take off and start to challenge things like Tether and USDC and that. That is possible. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's going to happen. I don't, yeah, I can't say I really like the idea of Facebook being able to have a stable coin that they can have out there. But I mean, I use Facebook. It's not like I'm completely against it, but I don't like some of the things that they have done with people's privacy and things like that. That really... It rubbed my nose a little bit the wrong way, but you know, people can make mistakes. It doesn't mean they're completely bad and will stay bad forever. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But I, I get the feeling like, yeah, Facebook's stable coin, so DM, could be really, really big. It could really take off. I'm not saying it will, but I just get the feeling like it could. Because you've got to remember, a lot of the new kids, they're not using Facebook. They're into things like Instagram and all of that, but you know, Oh God, what is it? Snapchat and things like that. Facebook owns a lot of those, has big plays in a lot of those. So Facebook is still very, very big in the tech sector. And yeah, we'll have to wait and see. All right, Fed Chairman of, Min of Minneapolis says crypto is 95% fraud, hype, noise and confusion. But is it really? Look, I'd have to somewhat agree with that. Not so much the fraud part, but hype, noise, and confusion, absolutely. There's so many cryptos out there. I forget what it is. There used to be, you know, there was like over 10,000 cryptos. Now I think there is way more. I think most of those are absolute rubbish and garbage. But, you know, don't get me wrong. I think there's probably 100 or 200 
that are really good projects. Now, will they do really well? No, but I just think they're really good projects that have good teams behind them and they're trying to build to actually become something that's really good. Whether that can happen or not, well, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I think, unfortunately, definitely frauds out there, a lot of Ponzi schemes and things like that. And he even says that. He believes that the industry is full of Ponzi schemes. Completely agree. I think there's a number of, well, not full. Let's get rid of the full part. But I think there is a number of Ponzi schemes out there. Absolutely. But this is the new space. So much is being developed. You know, there's lots of really, really good ones out there. But, you know, I've got to be careful when I say lots. Because not lots of the 10,000, definitely. There's not many of the 10,000 plus cryptos that are good ones. But there are lots of good ones. I'd say there's probably at least 100, if not more, of good projects that are really trying to do something and aren't scams and schemes. That doesn't mean they're going to make it, unfortunately. That's, you know, investing. There's tons of different, you know, stocks and things you can invest in out there. They're not all going to do well. Uh, it is it is what it is. All right, so Aussie Green Bitcoin Miner, Iris Energy, files with SEC to go public on the NASDAQ. We were looking at this ages ago, but it seems like they're finally uh, getting there. So it's also good to see Aussie companies, you know, out there at the forefront uh, of the crypto space. You know, our government hasn't been overly forward with their sort of you know government regulation of crypto but in saying that they have put a lot of money into crypto uh power ledger uh they paid for a grant for power ledger uh very early on power ledger hasn't done all that well but still it shows that australia you know we're not completely outcasting at least the government i say because the public of australia are quite into cryptocurrencies but the government haven't you know kind of tried to ban it or anything like that they are just letting it grow uh, and you know have even put money into it so good and well done uh, for iris energy it'll be interesting to see where this goes and you know this may be a stock that i you know put some money into we'll have to wait and see i don't have many stocks i've got a few uh, i generally like crypto but look anyone who tells you all stocks are crap and you know all the rest of it and artificially pumped up the stock market in general is artificially pumped up absolutely but in saying that that stimulus money that has been put out there has also found its way into the crypto market and you need to remember that the crypto markets are a little bit un uh, artificially pumped up as well due to the stimulus money so we need to be careful you know particularly when you hear people say oh yeah all stocks are crap no plenty of stocks are good and they're always going to remain good does that mean they can't have a big correction because of the money printing that's happened absolutely not but guess what if the stock market crashes so will the crypto market that's just the way it is and the crypto market will likely crash harder a lot harder but it'll also most likely recover a lot faster and a lot better that's just the way it is but that's what you need to keep in mind and we'll have a look at a story soon about you know not so much stocks but you know cash a lot of people say cash is trash and it's dead and it's going to die it's definitely got issues. I don't think it's going to last long term, like another hundred years. But cash is not dead. Cash is still king. There is still a great use for cash, day to day transactions and things like that. But again, we'll get to that very shortly. All right, Binance still trying to get their house in order and it's good. So Binance hires former US Treasury criminal investigator to enhance regulatory compliance. They've had a number of issues uh, all over the globe and they still have issues going on. But I, I think Bi uh, Bitcoin, sorry, I do think Bitcoin's going to make it, but I also think Binance is going to make it. I think they will get regulated. They'll do everything they have to. It just can't happen fast enough for them at the moment. They are really going to lose uh, ground on other exchanges and things that get regulated quicker so hopefully Binance can get all that sorted out but it shows that they haven't given up CZ's not just going to chuck the towel in and you know take his billions of dollars and just sort of leave the space he wants Binance to succeed long term and he even wants Binance to be decentralized so it'll be interesting to see how that goes in the future long arm of the law watch out you know a lot of people think you know crypto is just full of scams there's definitely scams out there, but there's scams in every kind of market. It's not just crypto. And it shows that the long arm of the law is still coming after the, you know, the bad players. So the founder of Bitcoin Mixer Helix pleads guilty to money laundering charges. 
you know, these kind of platforms, while they may not be able to be taken down, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see, you know, people who create those kind of things, yeah, the long arm of the law, as I say, or, you know, regulators, whoever you want to call them, they will catch up with you eventually. And that's just, you know, the way it is. Hardly anyone ever gets away with crimes forever. They might get away with them for a month, two months, three years, six years, decades. Eventually, the law generally catches up with all criminals. That's just the way it is. That's the, uh, the truth. It's the statistics. You know, again, you know, if a criminal can get away with, you know, some crime, you know, it's, it's kind of like gambling. Take your money and run. Like, you know, <laughs> don't come back because eventually you'll just go one too many times and you'll lose it all. And that is what happens with criminals. It's a law of statistics. The more time you try and do you do something like that, the closer you are to being caught. And that's just the way it goes. So, you know, we, we need to remember that, you know, there's people losing money uh, to a lot of these schemes. And I'm not saying this... Uh, platform here is a scheme but that's what a lot of people do to launder stolen uh, and fraudulently obtained funds and things like that and we don't want things like that in there like yeah it's great for the criminals they love it and want it but you know people who've worked hard for their money also you know lose their money uh, through platforms like this so yeah all right Again, we've seen a bit of a pullback. You know, people got a little bit scared and even I got a little bit scared, sort of nervous. Now, again, it's only a little bit scared and nervous, but there's still lots of good, positive things happening out there in the space. And here's another one. So major Dutch uh, football club, PSV, they hold Bitcoin and they've also now been uh, gotten some sponsorship that's going to be paid entirely in Bitcoin. So they have teamed up with any coin direct exchange uh, to have yeah their sponsorship paid in Bitcoin. So even big massive clubs out there are now starting to do this. Again, we spoke about the other day. Uh, you know, teams are going to start wearing you know jerseys that are sponsored by Dogecoin or at least have Dogecoin or Bitcoin or Ethereum and all those kind of things on it. That is when the rest of the world that don't really know what crypto is at the moment and you know are likely big sports fans somewhere along the way most people generally like at least one sport not all there's people that aren't into sports but even gaming sports are now starting to get into crypto the adoption is slowly starting to happen i still you know i'm on the fence i jump between yes and no about whether we're going to see that super cycle stuff is crypto going to just have that flash moment where it really starts to take off and just goes unbelievably high and goes on like a decade uh, sort of bull run oh, yeah I don't know it's possible but you know then there'll be something come out in a couple of weeks and we'll have another bearish trend and you know I'll be like oh I don't know if it will happen it really is hard to kind of make heads or tails of it all right government watchdog is investigating conflicts of interest revolving the SEC officials and the ripple lawsuit so this is very, very interesting. Government watchdog Empower Oversight has requested internal documents from the US Securities and Exchange Commission or the SEC on cryptocurrency that potentially show conflicts of interest at the commission involving former high level officials. And this, will, this affects the commission's lawsuit against Ripple Labs uh, and its executives. I mean, this case has, you know, it's had everyone's attention, even if you love or hate XRP. Just if you're in the crypto space, full stop, everyone's eyes are on this to wait and see what happens. And now it looks like there could be yeah, problems from within the US Securities and Exchange Commission. And yeah, I mean, if this case gets thrown out uh, and Ripple wins, but even if Ripple sort of just pay a little fine, I get the feeling like the whole space is just going to... That may be the thing that just sets the market off and pushes us into, you know, one of those, you know, true kind of hype cycles where maybe we go on a 10-year bull run in cryptocurrencies. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. It is definitely not financial advice. You always need to be prepared for what happens if that's not true. And we go through another bear market where everyone loses, you know, 50 to 80 to 95% of all their gains. That is definitely something that could happen. And it has happened previously. Uh, there's no way to predict the future, but the best way to try is to base it on what's happened in the past. And the past says we go through four-year cycles and we are going to have another bear market. So keep that in mind. All right, Avalanche rushed to give out more than $180 million in DeFi incentives. Avalanche has been doing quite well. 
So what's happening is Avalanche will allocate up to 20 million of their AVAX tokens uh, for Aave and 7 million uh, AVAX tokens for Curve over the next three months. So again, trying to drum up his business on the Avalanche so they go through other protocols and they offer incentives uh, to stake liquidity and things like that. So this is probably part of the reason why Avalanche has done uh, so well. This is probably a little bit of buy the rumor, sell the news. So maybe now that this is out, because this only came out not too long ago, that you'll see a bit of a retracement from that Avalanche. Who knows? I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. Right, Bitcoin mining metric that has predicted every big BTC rally since 2020 is flashing again. Like I said, you know, it's definitely possible we could go down lower. But there are some indicators that are flashing. Things are about to get extremely bullish. So it is the hash rate ribbons. We can see it way down here. So it has finally, you know, sort of flashed like we're in a big buy system. Look at these. This usually means things are about to get super bullish. Now it didn't get super bullish here, but it was going up and again continued to go up and then it went up and look at that. Now we have one of these. All right, we also have Bitcoin's weekly MACD just crossed bullish and it's for the first time in 11 months. Here's the weekly MACD and we can see it right down here. It hasn't quite crossed over yet and this could change, absolutely. It could just, you know, roll down. But the last time we saw this was way back over here. And then look, we saw, remembering this is the weekly, this is after that kind of Bart Simpson head sort of pattern thing, I think, somewhere around about there. Big, big, big move. So is this what's about to come? Possibly. All right, also Bitcoin Lightning Network. So payment product, uh, so it's a layer two solution, payment product built on the top of Bitcoin blockchain that enables secure, private, and near instantaneous transactions at little to no cost has surpassed 25,000 active nodes for the first time in an indication that the network is growing stronger with more nodes and more channels. Now, part of this is because a lot of Bitcoin miners turned off over in China. We talked about this the other day, and now they're slowly starting to come back online and they are most likely going to the layer two solution as well. This is what we need for that mass adoption. Again, it's things like this that maybe th makes me think it's definitely possible we go into some big hype cycle and again, we go on a 10 year bull run. Completely possible. You know, I'm not sold on it. I just have it in my mind that this is something that could happen. But also, I'm probably more leaning towards we are going to have some uh, kind of correction sometime in the not too distant future. Look, whether it's in the next month, whether it's still another year away, who knows, but I get the feeling like the four year cycles aren't over. And you just look at how well things are doing all over the globe. House prices going through the roof and stocks going up. Yeah, it's unlikely that that can last forever. And there's probably something that's going to come. Yeah, that's really gonna hurt people. And this last story that we're gonna look at is another reason that makes me think it's possible. So Coinbase, Coinbase, <laughs> Coinbase stockpiles 4.4 billion in case of a crypto winter. And a crypto winter would likely be a market uh, correction as well. It won't be just crypto anymore. They're, they're lining up and they are, yeah, they are highly uh, correlated to each other. The bigger the crypto space gets, the more in line it gets uh, with the rest of the sort of investing world, particularly stocks. So Coinbase, the exchange, maintains cash reserves so it can continue to invest and expand even in the worst case scenario of a crypto winter. Coinbase's cash reserves stood at 4.36 billion at the end of June. That was up 1.1 billion at the end of last year. So cash is not dead. I spoke about that before. Do I think cash is going to last another 50 to 100 years i think it's going to be really hard it just continues to get you know printed to infinity but that doesn't mean that can't change somehow or that at least in the kind of short term again the everything bubble that has been spoken about finally pops and we go from inflation to stagnation and then into oh god what's the other one it's totally got a mind blank now deflation sorry where suddenly cash becomes the thing to have you want to hold on to cash that is completely possible a lot of people have spoken about it and think that it's coming so make sure that you have some cash and you take some profits 
Uh, you know, again, that's my personal opinion, not financial advice. I can never offer you financial advice. But cash is not dead. Cash is not trash. It is not the greatest form of investment. But if you don't have cash, how do you buy the dips? Yeah, it's great that, you know, you might be getting paid weekly, fortnightly, so you can keep putting little bits in. But, you know, if you haven't taken some profits, and a lot of people, it's, you know, it's not my personal opinion, but say that you should have about 10 to 15% cash at all times, if not more. Some people have a whole lot more. So when there are big dips, you can take advantage of that. So just something to keep in mind. Again, I don't have a lot of cash at the moment. I put a lot, of, most of my cash into the dip that we had. If it continues to go a whole lot lower here, then I guess, you know, it's going to hurt a little bit. Don't get me wrong. I'm still well in profit overall, so I can, you know, sell out, not completely sell out, but, you know, cash some out to sort of help me get through. But unfortunately, likely I'll be cashing out at near the bottom and then it'll start to go back up. So, yeah, be care be very careful how you play this space. I still have cash on the side. I just don't have a lot. I put most of it, like I said, back into the market. Hopefully, uh, that was a good decision. So far, it's doing all right, but whether it's going to pay off in the saw, in the more midterm, we'll have to wait and see. All right, that's it for me. A lot of stories to get through. Very interesting. All these Bitcoin things showing up that you know the market is about to heat up. Hopefully, they come true. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully, you're all on that game train, and I'll see you next time.